I'm joined today on Turf Business TV by Andy Croft, uh, somebody that a lot of you will know from his time at Derby County. Andy, thanks for your time today. No um, problem. We're actually stood on the side of the Stoke pitch. Uh, you've got a, a connection here and we've, we've met up here because you're not currently um, a groundsman with a with a team or a, a venue at the moment. You're doing some consultancy, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I was doing some consultancy over in um, Poland. A um, bit of a golf course, football club. Um, so yeah, doing a okay. bit something like that. So I want to start with where you started, really. So where was your first involvement in grounds? Started at Derby County, uh, February 1991. Okay. Um, obviously worked my way up to, up the ladder um, from the baseball ground, from the old training ground um, to the new training ground, then to be Mark Robinson's assistant, yep. and then obviously when Mark Robinson left to join Rigby Taylor. Um, it was a good thing then at the club that they were promoted within. within. And September 2006, I was head groundsman at Derby County. So you started off at Derby <coughs> County. Mm -hmm. What attracted you to, to go and work for Derby County in the first place then? Just followed it all my life, you know. Used to stand on the pop side with my dad on a stool that he made for us. And, you know, it's every kid's dream. You know, if you weren't good enough to play for the club that you supported, then obviously the next best thing was to to be a groundsman there. Okay, and that was your first job, was it? Yeah, first job. So yeah. straight out of school? Straight out of school, more or less, yeah, and started with the Rams. Andy, so 24 years at Derby County, you must have seen a lot of changes in that time. Yeah, obviously, um, from when we started in 1991 to when I left in May 2015, a lot of changes, um, you know, basically um, the groundsmanship's, you know, evolved over the years and so the changes you saw um, with the club did that give you more investment and more, more tools and toys to play with not really um, I think the last time we got any significant amount of equipment was when they got promotion right to the Premier League back in 2007 right and that more or less had to last me until I left last year so okay. not you know not much really coming in. We started chatting when uh, I saw a tweet that you sent out with a photograph of what you achieved with it. no lights, yep. not too much else help. Um, you're obviously very proud of what you achieved there. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, with a little equipment to go on and it was like a case of making things, looking after things and making things, you know, work um, to your advantage. You were telling me a little story off camera that uh, didn't have lights so you went off and you kind of built some. Yeah, along with the maintenance team at the club we got some ex-cannabis um, lights and obviously... I need to point out they were confiscated by the confiscated, police. Confiscated, yeah, they weren't, mine, no, they weren't mine. No, they weren't mine. Obviously got them from the police and uh, the frames were made from the old goalposts. Right. And they were 600 watt lamps we got. So it was a case of trying to keep what you had yeah. in the certain hours that you could use them as not to like, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bring any um, seed through or anything like that. Okay. So I know that you, you're aware of some of the comments Paul Burgess made to us uh, hmm. at Real Madrid recently about the, the quality of craftsmanship. <clears throat> um, I think his comments were made really to try and get people to think about what they were doing and, and maybe improve their lot and, and their rewards. Yeah. Um, what do you think of, of what he said? I don't think he's far off the mark, to be fair. Like I said, it's a lot easier. There's a lot more stuff that the groundsman's dispense now with the lights, with a hybrid pitch, with a thermometer saying, you know, how warm your pitch is, um, you know, something like, is it a theta indicator that tells you when it needs yeah. to be watered? Um, and all that should be done up there right. and on gut instinct, I think. You, you, look at, you look at your pitch and you think, you know, we're looking at Andy Jackson's pitch here and yeah. it's beautiful. So he must know, he comes in and looks at that and think, yeah, it's, what do you need to do to that? You think the skill is being driven out of the game by the technology, is that what you're saying? I don't think that there's still a lot of skillful groundsmen involved. Um, I don't think it's a case of them not being skillful, I just think it's a lot easier when you've got this, this and this 
that you dispense. Okay. Um, I think one of Paul's comments was, you know, people need to push the boundaries a bit. And, yeah. And some of that is with technology. Technology. Um, I always, I was never frightened when I was at Derby to look at the weather and think, I tell you what, you don't need to do anything to that today. Right. Not necessarily in the summer months, but when you have like little or no equipment or anything, then you've got to judge, you know, you've got to be a good judge of your pitch, um, knowing when to go on, but more importantly, knowing when not to go on. Sure. When not to do things, because sometimes, as daft as it sounds, if you don't do something, it may benefit it probably, you know, a week or so, two weeks down the line. Right. Um, but that's how, you know, that's how it was at Derby. That's how. That's, that's a that's judgment how, call, and that's where that's you That's how you had to think. Call, yeah? yeah, that's how you had to think. Like I say, if if you've got three, four, five lights, then obviously them decisions that you may think about, thinking, say what, we won't do that today. Maybe the lights will probably sway your decision, thinking, oh, we'll be all right, we've got the lights. Got you. you okay. Oh, we'll be all right, we've got this. Do you know what I mean? So I see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. So, consulting at the moment, mm -hmm. but if a job came up that, you know, gave you your own venue again, would you jump at that? Or? Oh yeah, definitely, absolutely, 100%. Or even, you know, consulting still in, in Europe, that would be fantastic, superb. So, I know you're a keen cricketer, have you ever dabbled on the cricket side of things in terms of... Only, helping, uh, only helping our lads out on a Tuesday yeah. night, but while they're preparing the wicket, me and my mate are normally having a net, so... Oh yeah? Yeah, <laughs> get, got to get your eye in, haven't you? Never been tempted to, to look at cricket as... Uh, possibly, possibly, yeah, yeah, you never, you never put, you, you know, never put anything out of the question. Ironic, we were talking about cricket there and it's starting to rain, so yep. I think it's rain stop play, Andy. Yep. Great to meet you. And you, Look pal. forward to keeping in touch. Yep. And uh, good luck with the career going forward. Thank you.